Lovro coming here to uh, share this uh, experience of uh, time and event, and in this case, rock. Uh, so, um, uh, this is kind of following on from, from uh, David's magnificent introduction to the Anthropocene here. Uh, and David used uh, 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 the scalpel rather more uh, often than the, the, the chainsaw. I will be using uh, exclusively a uh, 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 pickaxe and a sledgehammer, you know, um, reverting to type as a geologist in, in this case, uh, because I'll be talking about the uh, Anthropocene um, as geological time, uh, which for most geologists means as rock, uh, as the evidence of, of ancient time uh, that we have, that we can compare the present with. Um, so, uh, David's already shown this, and, and this is, if you like, all of geological time. It's one third of, of cosmic age, uh, and it takes four and a half billion years of exceedingly complicated history, uh, and parcels it up into what we fondly hope are usable chunks of time which are all given names like Carboniferous and Cambrian and, and, and Pleistocene and, and so forth. Uh, and those are defined both as time and also as rock, as units of rock strata which represent that time. Uh, so uh, if the Anthropocene is to join uh, this and, and go as, as, uh, as David said, uh, right at the very top line there above the Holocene, uh, then it also has to have a physical presence that geologists can relate to and understand and compare with what they glean from the past uh, in ancient strata. So, um, uh, you know, the question is, uh, and, and uh, there are many Anthropocenes, uh, so here I'm going to re restrict myself to what we call the uh, geological, or even worse, the, the stratigraphic uh, Anthropocene, uh, which is the one that is now being considered, and I stress being considered uh, for inclusion uh, on the geological timescale, which for geologists will be a very, very, very big step. Uh, the the, the timescale is the backbone of the science, uh, and it is not changed at all lightly, um, uh, and always very controversially. Um, so, uh, uh, again, the, the idea is old, in, in, in a certain sense. So it, it might be said to begin with, uh, with the Comte de Buffon, uh, Georges Leclerc, who in uh, 17, um, uh, 1778 uh, wrote the first Earth history, a scientifically based Earth history. Uh, he had seven epochs, and, and the last one was Lorsque la puissance de l'homme a seconde, when the power of, 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 of man helped, assisted that of nature. Um, uh, Buffon was an optimist in, 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 in that. Uh, and uh, again, the, the, uh, the idea you know, with, with, with George Perkins Marsh and, and Stepani and Vladimir Vernatsky also uh, kind of resurfaced in various forms, but also that humans were affecting um, the physical, chemical, biological structure of the Earth. Now, uh, one of the, the main things to remember is that, uh, for the most part, again, in, the, in this, the dark ages of, of the last century, um, these ideas were broadly thought of as nonsense by almost all of the geological community, because they could see you know, this huge history, mountain building, o oceans opening and closing. Um, uh, uh, there is you know, Edward Berry in 1926 saying something which still resonates um, with quite a number of my colleagues today. You know, that, you know, yes, humans do lots of, of, um, of, of, of strange and amazing things, but, you know, as geology, it's nonsense uh, because, you know, of, of, of the contrast in, in scale and time and, and, and all of these sorts of things. Uh, so, uh, this is still the battleground, if you like, or, or the, the, the theater of discussions uh, that we are on. Uh, now, the modern Anthropocene, of course, started um, with this wonderful improvisation uh, by Paul Crutzen, uh, a, 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 a brilliant atmospheric chemist who, who, who um, uh, you know, was one of a, a small group of people who resolved the, the, the mystery, the large mystery of, of uh, the ozone layer, um, 
with the, the, this idea that the Earth has changed, again, for the, the reasons that, that David outlined, you know, that changes to the, 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 the chemistry uh, and the biology uh, and, and the physical structure of the Earth. Uh, so that eventually, now geologists are slow to catch on, you know, in this, so the term had been in, in, in widespread use, not least by, you know, Will Steffen, who will be um, uh, giving the keynote tomorrow uh, on, on this, who um, the, the Earth System Science community very quickly picked up this term and, and used it um, as uh, reflecting a new phase of Earth history. Now, that is not quite geology, because geology is a people who live in the past, and I definitely live in the past in this sense. So, this term, uh, uh, has to work as geology, has to be translated into rock. So uh, effectively, that's what I'll be spending the next few minutes going through, seeing what kind of rock, what kind of strata that are now being formed, uh, and how those may or may not be thought of as being distinct, distinct enough to, at least within geology, you know, to deserve their, their own name, and, and uh, their own formal name. The inth informal Anthropocene, I think, is here for good, um, the question I'm dealing with personally with my colleagues, including Will and, 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 and others, um, is, is whether it should be formal geology. So this, again, it, 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 you know, this is one of the, the early... So the geologists came in, really, um, not much more than five years ago on this and, and began to debate this idea as geology and, and to form this, uh, uh, this working group you know, of the International Commission. Uh, and what we have, the, if, if, like this is the, the more or less the, the original idea which had very much based on Paul Crutzen. You have a long Holocene, you have the Pleistocene going back, oh, two and a half million years, way outside there in, into, the, um, into the courtyard, uh, many, many glacial, uh, glaciations into glacials, um, and then 11 and a half thousand years ago, uh, climate changed for, you know, the umpteenth, fiftieth or so time, in, you know, from glacial to interglacial times, relative stability through the Holocene, and then very, very late on, uh, and this is more or less the Industrial Revolution line here, um, with increase in human population, uh, erosion, carbon dioxide, and all of that. You know. So, if we look at that a wee bit more closely in here, We'll come again to this, the fourth of these options that David uh, talked about. Uh, we have up, up there, we have again the, the great acceleration. Again, this you know, wonderful phrase from, from Will and, and John McNeil and, and Paul Crutzen um, of you know, growth in population and energy use and much else. Uh, and that is currently, if you like, the leading geological candidate you know, as an event that leaves marks in strata, that's the important thing, you know, for us, for geologists, uh, that can define an Anthropocene. So, uh, currently, again, ge geologically, um, the Anthropocene seems to start about there. Though, again, I, I stress that is still being debated uh, within the working group. We have not made any formal recommendations yet. If we make formal recommendations, there is no guarantee at all that the International Commission will take them up uh, because we are the lowest rank of any possible hierarchy. Um, uh, and all the decisions are taken up there. Uh, you know, so um, all we have is a privilege, if you like, uh, of, 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 um, uh, of trying to understand this phenomenon, phenomenon uh, of the Anthropocene. So, anyway, let's break it down to geology. Uh, we deal with rock. Uh, rocks are made of minerals, uh, so what kind of minerals do we have uh, in, in, in the Anthropocene? Uh, and the answer is quite a lot. Uh, you know, there's a, 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 a lovely piece of sculpture by the artist Angela Palmer uh, on show in London a couple of weeks ago, uh, where the Anthropocene is represented as this new mineral made of steel, a very Anthropocene material, never been seen in, in four and a half billion years of Earth history, uh, you know, in this wonderful crystalline. Um, form. Uh, and of course, all the metals that are, are, are so now familiar, the metals we have here, you know, forming the, the, the balustrade and on, on the stairs and so on, uh, these geologically are remarkable because a planet, nature, does not like uncombined metals. It combines them with oxygen, with silicon, uh, with, with, with carbonate, uh, with sulfide and, and, and so on. Uh, so, native metals are a few, gold is, is one of them, uh, but to take things like aluminium and titanium, all of these, 
um, and, and to purify them in, into their own mineral, as it were, uh, is one of many novelties uh, of, of the Anthropocene. Uh, and as a geologist, I, I see it as a very, very geological uh, one. Um, uh, it's partly kind. This is something new in kind. Uh, it's also something new in scale. So here is a, uh, a graph. There won't be too many graphs, I, I, I promise you. Uh, uh, but they will all look like this. Uh, of, uh, of aluminium. <laughs> um, first purified, you know, somewhere around here, uh, and then negligible amounts, again to, to this time in the mid-20th century, and the amounts shoot up. Uh, and so now we've produced of the order of, uh, uh, of, of 500 million tons of aluminium around the Earth. Um, uh, how much is that? You know, again, what's a figure? Um, well, it's enough to take uh, some standard kitchen foil uh, and entirely coat the United States of America uh, in, in, in kitchen foil. Uh, and parts of Canada as well uh, in, in that. Now, iron, iron and steel, there's about an order of magnitude more than, than that. So that can clearly cross continents and so on. Um, this is now being made in geological amounts. Uh, other minerals, there are a lot of synthetic minerals, new types of garnet, you know, the lasers. Diamond is no longer the hardest material on Earth. Uh, it's boron, boron nitride, uh, made now in hundreds of tons as an industrial abrasive. Um, and there are many, 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 your ballpoint pen in your pocket. The ball is probably made of, uh, uh, of, of, of uh, tungsten carbide, again, a novel mineral now made in large amounts. Um, how many of these minerals are there? Um, well, we don't know. Nobody's counting. It's one of the, the big unknowns, the big, if you like, knowledge vacuums of the Anthropocene, um, is quite how many of these the industrial chemists have made and the materials chemists. Um, I would have thought at least certainly thousands. How does that fit onto uh, a scale? We'll look at it in a minute, but there's lots of others, you know, of, of these new types of chemical structure, which effectively are, are, are minerals. Uh, we also have mineraloids, things which don't have quite a fixed composition, uh, but composition varies within limits. Glass is one, we have lots of glass around. Um, uh, plastics is a, a wonderful example. Uh, again, plastic is in a, a novel form of, of polymer, uh, uh, of which, um, which can um, fossilize, quite well. Uh, this, uh, a day later, was covered by a layer of tarmac uh, in the road outside my house, so it is going into the record uh, already. Uh, and there is, here's one on a, a beach, beach rock in Portugal, already becoming fossilized. Um, how much plastic is there? Um, all too much. Um, this is an image of, of part of the, the Spanish countryside, um, and it probably represents, if you like, the global distribution of plastics. If you take the amount of plastic, uh, that we, we have, um, there we have up to now about 300 million tons a year. So that's roughly each of our own body weight, a year of plastic being made. Almost none recycled, uh, almost all landing up somewhere in the environment. Um, so if you, you, you then add that together from 1950, that's about 5 billion tons. Uh, with that, you can wrap the whole globe in one layer of cling film or plastic wrap. Uh, in that, you know, so it, it makes this, uh, again, a, 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 you know, a representative part of the globe as regards plastic. Uh, and, and what we have, again, the, this idea of the speed of change, you know, so there are many forms of plastic now, uh, and these have evolved rapidly, you know, in decades and even years, to give us a very fine, what we call stratigraphy, we can use plastics to date strata far more finely than we can use dinosaurs or trilobites. Um, so, if, if we just take a brief history of minerals, again, this is kind of the, the big history of minerals. Um, uh, you know, starting from the cosmos, about a dozen minerals, they're rather boring in, in outer space. You build a solar system, and, and the amount goes up about 250 in, in meteorites. You build a planet, uh, you stretch out the chemistry, you, you make more minerals. Um, the big step is two and a half billion years ago, when oxygen arrived on the planet. For every mineral, you had a, an oxide and hydroxide, so you doubled the number more or less. Um, uh, and then the number pretty well stayed the same, and, and you had a number of biological events, none of which really shifted the number of minerals until we came along uh, and made a spike uh, of an unknown number of new minerals, but probably equaling the number of minerals already present on Earth. 
Uh, minerals make rocks. Uh, so we, we have a number of rocks, um, and this is probably the, the rock par excellence of, of the Anthropocene concrete. Um, again, the Romans made it, but uh, this is what it looks like um, in, in that. Uh, this is, if you magnify it in, in an electron microscope, it's a new world. There is a new world of concrete full of, of fly ash particles. There is nothing like this I know of geologically at all. It is a very distinctive new form of rock um, you know, uh, that, that we're making. Um, and the amount, uh, again, in the back of a, a, a beer mat calculation of, 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 uh, uh, of, of the amount, 500 billion tonnes. Uh, that is enough uh, to make but one kilo of concrete uh, on every square metre of the Earth's surface, land and sea. Um, or you can make, and this is a lovely image by the artist Anse from Milong, uh, you can take, um, uh, uh, you can make a, a full-scale replica of the Earth in a shell two millimetres thick. Um, which, uh, um, they're the aliens doing that. That's a long story. You know, there's several beers worth of story on, on, on that. Uh, bricks, again, Lots of, not quite as much as concrete, but uh, about a trillion bricks uh, made uh, every year uh, on that, and they just go on and, and on. Uh, minerals make rocks, rocks make strata. Um, we make strata both by uh, basically building stuff up uh, on the surface in, in large heaps, uh, or by making holes in the ground to take that stuff out of. Uh, and you can map that. That is now, even now, formally mapped geologically. It goes on geological maps. Um, here's a part of London map. Uh, and again, um, the, the, main, the stuff piled up is the green, the made ground. Uh, the stuff um, uh, in, in, in the red is the worked ground, the holes in the ground, and the blue is where you take a hole in the ground and fill it in again with something else. Uh, so all of these are effectively Anthropocene anthropo or anthropogenic strata. Uh, again, present in large amounts now, underneath, particularly underneath our cities. Uh, and we go further. Uh, you know, the average animal can burrow down. I think the record animal is a Nile crocodile going down about 12 meters. Uh, we go down much further. Uh, and we create networks as a bit of the Paris metro. Uh, there's a, 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 a gold mine um, three kilometers beneath South Africa. You know, I'm not sure I would like to be down there. Uh, but we've riddled the ground. There's a, a, a plan of boreholes off, off the Netherlands. Um, you know, so we have altered the substructure of the ground we live on as well as altering the surface you know, in, in a fairly large way. Uh, and there's another one. There's a surface. It's, it's what's underground that's important. A kilometre underground, there is a mass of radioactive and melted and broken up rock from a nuclear test, an underground nuclear test. Uh, and again, there are about a couple of thousand of these around the world. They're very big in scale. Uh, and they're, uh, uh, again, there's nothing like them in, in, uh, in, in Earth history. Uh, we scrape uh, the ocean floor. We trawl the ocean floor, um, plow it effect effectively, uh, and therefore restructure most of the continental shelves to, to catch fish you know, for us. And, and uh, that is another way of making strata, both undersea and on land. Um, chemistry, there's lots of chemistry. Here's just a few examples of the way we're changing the chemistry of what we call chemostratigraphy, the chemistry of strata. Um, so, uh, again, you know, typically we, we do this by all the things we do to keep ourselves comfortable. Um, uh, here's a, a nice example. It's a relatively new example. Um, uh, this is, if you don't know what smoke looks like, this is smoke. It is a particle of industrial smoke from the high temperature burning of hydrocarbons, about 20 thousandths of a millimetre across. Um, you can, these are almost indestructible. Um, they're very, very indigestible. Uh, and so things don't eat them and they pile up in, in the soil and lake sediments. And again, you have another hockey stick of, of uh, no, none of this, these fly ash particles. Uh, and then they really begin to build up from the mid 20th century. Uh, and in fact, what we've done is we've smoked the earth. Uh, there is a layer, so it's a physical layer of strata marked by having these smoke particles, which you can extract by standard micropaleontological techniques, you know, to characterize um, uh, uh, an anthropocene stratal unit. Um, CO2 goes up again. We, we, this is something that has been and will be discussed. Um, uh, you can get fossil air in, in ice under Greenland and Antarctica. Um, uh, and, of course, that shows us, again, as, as David has shown, uh, that we, we've had this rather remarkable stability of, of CO2 going up and down and up. And we're on up, and we've taken it about another third up. 
Uh, again, we're back about three or five million years ago in the Pliocene epoch as regards the chemistry of, of, of air, of, of, uh, of CO2, and we're waiting to see what will happen because of that. Um, what has already happened, again, to a geologist, um, we're looking for marks and strata. Um, because of the, um, the burning of, of CO2, that coal and oil has got a specific chemical composition of isotopes, uh, and we can see that as, as the amount of, of CO2 is burned. So the, the isotope chemistry of, uh, of carbon in the surface, absorbed by wood and shells and things like that, has gone down in a spike. So we can already read that in strata. Again, to us, that's important. Uh, and of course, because over 400,000 years as CO2 has gone up and down, temperature has gone up and down, more or less in lockstep. Um, uh, what we're beginning to see, again, this is you know, part of the, one of the great questions of the day, is temperature going up in, in the other hockey stick you know, in the last century or so. It's just gone up by, cent by degrees centigrade uh, now. Uh, and of course, we're waiting again to see what will happen. Ice is beginning to melt. Uh, we know that. Uh, here's a, a recent paper uh, just out last year showing uh, the freshening of the water around Antarctica because enough ice is melting uh, to put something like two to four hundred um, uh, million tons of, of, of water, dump that into the oceans. Uh, and, and so because of things like that, sea level is beginning to creep up. Geologically, I say, just beginning to creep up by three millimeters uh, a year. Um, we're making the oceans more acid. Again, this is well known that as CO2 goes up, it dissolves in the water, pH uh, goes down. Uh, it's gone down by about a, 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 you know, one-tenth of a pH point. Um, that's about 30% more hydrogen ions in the water. And uh, uh, so what we may well do is, as we did 55 million years ago, well, not we, but the, the Earth did, uh, when it naturally released a lot of CO2 and methane, it acidified the oceans and literally here at this point dissolved the ocean floor. It dissolved the carbonates on the ocean floor. Um, and... With another 100 ppm in the atmosphere, uh, we threaten to begin to do the same kind of thing, uh, and therefore, amongst other things, to stop coral reefs growing. Uh, that's not just the end of an ecosystem, but for geologists, it's the end of a type of rock, a coral reef rock, a reef limestone, the kind of things that we put on geological maps. So again, another one, this has already been mentioned, also the, the nitrogen spike, uh, it's a bigger perturbation uh, than the, the carbon perturbation. Perhaps the biggest perturbation, um, though it's harder to tell because the chemistry is more difficult, uh, since the, the early Proterozoic two and a half billion years ago, uh, because of, of, of this massive appropriation, again, it leaves a signal. Uh, in lake sediments, you know, all through the northern hemisphere, uh, you can see the nitrogen chemistry take a dip from about 50, 70 years ago. Uh, again, to us, that's important because it's a mark in rock strata uh, of uh, an, an environmental event that is, is going on. Um, and one of the, the, um, uh, the effects um, of that um, is to begin to change not just the chemistry, but the biology of those lakes far distant from any agriculture. This is nitrogen aerosols traveling for hundreds, thousands of kilometers, landing in a, a distant lake and beginning to change the populations of, of uh, algae and diatoms and such like. You know, so you go from one sort of fossil to another sort of fossil. Uh, and this is uh, the work of Alex Wolf and others um, you know, in, uh, in these distant lakes. And again, this is, if you like, present day paleontology in action. Biology becoming paleontology. Uh, and, of course, another event is those fertilizers pour off uh, the fields into the rivers and then into the sea. Uh, and nitrogen and phosphorus that isn't used then is used to create um, plankton blooms. Uh, those die, sink to the seafloor, decay, use up oxygen. Uh, and these things called dead zones formed. You know, currently something like um, uh, 250,000 square kilometers around the Earth, Chesapeake Bay, the Baltic, and so on, being killed off literally being suffocated uh, every summer uh, before the, the winter storms bring the oxygen back. Uh, again, this will leave a mark in the sediments that are accumulating at the bottom of those seas that will become a stratum um, in, in, in the future. 
Uh, another signal, uh, this again, this uh, one that so far, you know, unless, you know, with, with a, a couple of, um, uh, you know, horrible exceptions in, 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 at the end of the Second World War, this is a signal that is still uh, environmentally trivial, but it's a marker. Again, for geologists, it's a marker of sediments that we are all contaminated. You know, you and, and I and, and this carpet here, with enough plutonium and cesium to measure, to register. So all sediments since 19, really 52 or so, are also contaminated um, and have a marker, a plutonium marker uh, in them, which will last at least 100,000 years. Uh, fossils, again, I'm a paleontologist, I, I like fossils, they're great fun, you know, one can uh, be a, a child all your life looking at fossils, it's a great excuse. Um, uh, this is a, a, a trace, we, we have body fossils, bones, teeth, we have trace fossils, um, tracks and trails, there's a track and trail in the Cambrian about 500 million years ago, it might, might have been a good Saturday night on, on that, with that pattern. Um, and there's one of our equivalents. Um, uh, th these don't last, they won't st last on here, for instance. Uh, there's another one, this is a nice one, it's, it's one of my favourite. It's, it's a, a fossilised wasp's nest made of little bits of pumice. It's a, a million years or so old, you know, on the island of Tenerife. And, and you can find hundreds of these if you know where to look. Uh, and in, in Sydney, this is one of the equivalents uh, in that, you know, as is a building we're standing in, uh, it's a thing formed of rock, effectively, or things we come out of the ground, which is something we've made and which can fossilise. Hence, a trace fossil. Um, our trace fossil systems are huge. Um, this is part of a trace fossil system called Shanghai, um, uh, which goes on and on <laughs> and on. <laughs> and our trace fossil systems extend in different ways across the fields. You know, again, we alter those in a way that can be preserved um, if, if you're in the right place to be preserved. Uh, so we have different patterns. Um, you know, so again, this is something remarkable. There's been nothing like, if you like, the urban trace fossil system or the urban stratum in four and a half billion years of geology. Uh, body fossils, again, the, these are, if you like, more traditional fossils. Uh, meet, uh, this is Jane. Uh, Jane is the Leicester University's teenage dinosaur, teenage tyrannosaur, um, uh, 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 on that. So it's one type of fossil. Here's another one, a nice trilobite. Um, and fossils are used, again, another graph. This is half a billion years here, to track the history of life, the ups and downs of life, from the Cambrian here, Ordovician radiation here, and then the, the dips are the mass extinction events where life takes a tumble. Um, uh, and of course we have our own tumble uh, at the moment in, 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 in the Anthropocene. How big is that tumble? Uh, again, this is um, a, a famous example is the poor dodo uh, in, in the Didosineptus, give it a name like that, that is insult to injury, if ever I, I heard it. Uh, the Yangtze dolphin, photographed and, and now probably extinct. Um, the, the, Costa, the Costa Rican golden toad, discovered about 1964, I think, uh, extinct around about 1990. Uh, one of, 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 of many, particularly amphibians. How big an event is this? And this is work done, um, uh, extraordinary work by Tony Barnowski, again, who's one of the, the members of the working group. Uh, who asked this, this question, you know, is it here yet? Do we have a mass extinction event? Uh, and the answer is no, not yet. Uh, because um, in terms of number of species, we know to be extinct. That is still 1%, 2%, something like that. In terms of numbers of species on the edge, and in very low numbers, critically endangered, we're now in the, in the tens of percent, you know, up to more than 50%. You know, so with business as usual, the prediction was two or three hundred years' time, simply with, with the ongoing industrialization, deforestation, that will give us a Cretaceous tertiary boundary style size uh, mass extinction event. Um, so that hasn't yet happened. Like global warming, it hasn't yet really happened, not geologically. But this has, uh, and it, it's the invaders. Uh, so if I introduce you to one or two, this invader, you will know very well here. Um, uh, 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 and this invader, this is my cat, uh, controlling the ecology of the back garden with an iron paw. Uh, and, and the number of cats, and this is a lovely, again, one of, uh, you know, uh, Anselm Milon's lovely illustrations uh, of cats. For every wild tiger, 
tiger left in the wild now, there are something like 100,000 domestic style cats in the world. Um, uh, you know, all over the world. And, and they're doing very well, thank you very much, and they will carry on doing very well, uh, whether they're feral or th whether they, they, they co-opt us as their slaves. Uh, so 100,000 cats, you'd probably fill the lecture theatre I don't know, I would say about 20,000 cats, so about five of this thing, you know. It gives a scale of the change in assemblage of biology uh, across the planet. Uh, rats as well, another example which have gone across the world. Um, uh, and other things, invertebrates, the zebra mussel, uh, originally from um, Russia, uh, and which came across to North America and did very, very, very well for itself. Uh, and that's in, in the last decade or so. So it's taken over, if you like, the waterways of the USA. In, in very so it is uh, you know, a key fossil of the future. It is a, for us, it's, it is a, a fossil event marker, or it will be certainly that in the future. And it's, this is big scale. So if you take uh, New Zealand, you have almost as many invasive species uh, as you have uh, native species. And if you have some groups like mammals, many more invasives. Um, and, and of course, all this relates because of us, you know. So, if again we go back to the, the kind of themes that, that, that Dave came with, you know, this is, uh, if you like, a, a cartoonification, you know, of, of, of Vatswaf Smil's uh, diagram. So, you know, we make up quite a lot uh, of vertebrate biomass. You know, the animals we keep uh, to eat uh, makes up most, and wildlife is there. Now, again, this links in with the nitrogen and the phosphorus. We have turbocharged, you know, the, 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 the trapping of energy in, into chlorophyll. We feed it very efficiently in, into our animals, and, and we feed that efficiently into us. So the total, this total size of, uh, is probably an order of magnitude greater um, than um, uh, was, was present, if you like, on a, a pre-industrialized, uh, a pre-nitrogen a pre-farming landscape. Uh, and other things, um, you know, here's possibly one of the key fossils, uh, future fossils. Uh, the Anthropocene chicken is huge um, and, and has different bones to the, to the, the chicken, you know, of that our, our, our parents used to eat. Um, and this is the commonest bird in the world now and the one with the shortest lifespan and the one which is turning up most in, you know, our garbage pits and so on. They will fossilize well. Uh, and in the sea is, is, of course, as well, we are both taking out uh, lots of fish, rearranging the ecosystem, uh, and also beginning to produce these transgenic fish, you know, which are also, you know, they will um, loom large, I think, in all of our lives in, in the future. Uh, and then the other thing, you know, the, 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 the relates to the question that was set, the things that we make... Um, are objects, artifacts, uh, which we've begun to call technofossils, because a lot of them are common and preservable into the future, fossilizable. Uh, so the amount of that is, is hugely greater than the amount of us, um, uh, and also evolving fast. You know, here's the evolution of the safety razor in, in the Deutsches Museum's lovely exhibit uh, on, on this. Uh, it's evolving, it's, it's decoupled from the evolution of us, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it is developing into something that, that the Peter Half of Duke University has called the technosphere. That is a new system budded off the biosphere, uh, which is now operating under its own dynamics, and we are part, and he would argue a captive part, component of the technosphere, which will evolve under its own dynamics. Um, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the notion of David's plane and, and so on comes to mind in, in, in this. Uh, so, uh, th here is, if you like, the evidence for the prosecution for the Anthropocene as a geological unit, a unit of, of strata and a unit of time simultaneously. We, we have this kind of combined thinking geology. Um, so, uh, really, that is, is currently up for discussion and being discussed. Um, so, are we really breaking through uh, again, to something quite new? You know, to, to something, as, as John McNeil put in his wonderful book title, something new under the sun uh, in, in, in that. So I, I'll just leave you with that thought and an Anthropocene sunset, you know, with the contrail, the jet contrail uh, in the air, and hopefully some of the controls uh, of that. 
Um, so thank you for your patience with, with all of this rock stuff. Uh, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.